Put up your hand if you want to get into a gorgeous bowl of buttery, garlicky steak bites on homemade mashed potatoes. This portion of this video was sponsored by Truff. We get sent hot sauces all the time and we've always said no. And that's because there's a jillion hot sauces out there and many are good, but none have stood out until now and until Truff. I didn't know this, but apparently Max has been using it for years and swears by it. Yes, sir. But it's my face and I needed to try it. And when I did, I said, I'm in. Look, I'm a truffle fan when truffle is used the right way and that's not overpowering and that's truff. It's their combination of really nice heat with that beautiful truffle. And now they've expanded into truffle oils, truffle mayo, even truffle pasta sauces. There's a reason it became the fastest growing company in the hot sauce space. And oh sure, the awesome looking truffle inspired bottle top is very cool, but that's not it. It's about what's inside. Thanks to Truff for sponsoring that part of our video. I do. My hand is up because I want them. Because it's a dinner that goes together like that. Under 30 minutes or whatever Rachel Ray would say. 30 minute meals. In 30 minutes. Less than 30 minutes. Something like that. But the steak part happens so fast. So fast. It'll be so delicious and so tender at the moment that they're ready. You want your mashed potatoes to be ready in advance. So you're not waiting for those. You cook the steak bites and then you have to wait for the mashed potatoes. No, we're not doing that. Let me show you where we are because this happens. Let me show you where we are. First things first, a little pot with some butter in it. You would recognize that as butter. This butter and this whipping cream, quarter of a cup of butter and about uh, three quarters of a cup of whipping cream are gonna come together to make the mashed potatoes. Oh, how you say, tremendous. They will get not much more than a little seasoning of salt and pepper, little garlic powder. What is that, half a teaspoon? third of a teaspoon. This we're gonna put on the heat and it'll start to melt and get gorgeous. But don't go away because in its place are our just boiled potatoes. So these are Yukon gold potatoes that have been peeled, put into a pot of cold water, brought to a boil, and when they get this tender, you see that? I'll do that once more for you. This tender, they're ready. And now they can be mashed. You didn't need to see that boiling part. So watch how this works. We're gonna use one of my favorite things, a potato ricer. Look, it's like a giant garlic press with interchangeable, what's this called? Interchangeable discs, different size holes, like this, like this, and here's how this works. Okay, so we drain the potatoes first, get the water out of them. Oh, fucking hell. And then these, I'm gonna put back on the heat just for a second to evaporate any leftover water. And when the water's gone, they come back. The water in the bottom. Now we get our big, potato ricer, we get a couple of the potatoes, we load it up, and we do this. You know, I'll do it this way so you can see them coming out. And you see how they come out like pieces of rice. It's great. This is guaranteed way to perfect creamy mashed potatoes. No lumps. Not that that's bad. Some people like a, a little lump in their potato. Uh, I do sometimes, and sometimes I prefer smooth. And that's what these will be. So get all these guys done. Last pieces like this. Now over to the flat for the cream and the butter. On they go and here's our little cream butter garlic nonsense. We'll put in about half and mix. Look you can see when you do this it just literally turns into perfect soft and creamy mashed potatoes. Oh my god. Max chance. Are we mashed potato fans? Yes. Big time. So look, this would be the time if you wanted to add something. A spoonful of chipotle, absolutely. Maybe some uh, caramelized onions, absolutely. A little blue cheese, you go for it. And then you have to taste it. Taste it for seasoning, that's important. Look at how smooth and gorgeous. Let's try that. Mm. They're perfect. If I didn't have any teeth, I could still eat them all. There's no chewing involved, there's only that. Keep those warm off to the side. I don't want them going brown or anything on the bottom. Just put a lid on it. We'll put them back on the heat if we need to right to the last minute. Now, steak. This happens fast. A couple little fillets. Look, you can use almost anything. They happen to be on sale. I got a good deal, so I'm going to take them. There's only one thing you need to do with this at this point. We're going to cut these guys up into little bites. And a little bite is going to look like this. And by bite, I mean 
like little one biters, right? Like this, don't make these too big. And there's a little bit of fat here and this is still absolutely okay with me. You see how tender this is cutting? Oh, it's great. I'll just put them in this little pan. We'll keep them out of the way. We'll continue our cutting. Just keep going at it. All right, there you go. First, gets a little bit of oil and a little salt and pepper and avocado oil. Please, look, use what you want. But in this case, this is going into a super hot cast iron pan. Use something that smokes at the highest smoke point, and that would be avocado oil. Give it a little bit of this just to lube everything up. And then we season with a little salt and pepper. Great. All right, this goes off to the side for a second. We're going to make a, the butter part of this. We're starting with some butter. That's about a quarter of a cup. Next, we're going to add some garlic. Let's go with some decent sized cloves. And four of them. Look, there's a bunch of steak. I mean, come on. What's a little garlic amongst friends? Maybe you don't want it first thing in the morning for breakfast, but okay, I'm rethinking this. We're just going with three of them. That was about a pound of steak. I think three cloves will be enough. I want to give it some aromatics. So let's go with a little bit of rosemary. We don't need too much. We'll just chop up some of these guys. And a little thyme, which is right here, which is always the biggest pain in the ass to get off. If you have one individual branch of it, then you can pull backwards like this. There you go. We'll give these guys a quick cut. We'll add this, pinch of salt and pepper. This steak's already been seasoned, so not too much. And then just for a little umami boost, about a teaspoon of my favorite soy paste. You won't taste it, you'll appreciate it. And we'll mix. And by the way, this is when soy paste is way preferable to soy sauce because mixing straight liquid soy in this would be difficult. And with this and the plane ready, I say we go to the grill and we cook. All right, so we're using a really hot nonstick pan and when you put a little water in and it does this, that's not just fun, you know it's ready. So a little bit more oil and now our steak goes in, but I'm not gonna do it all at once because I want to make sure that it all gets good color. That's the key to this. Super seared on the outside. Keep it nice in the middle. So now we can start putting pieces in. And when you do, just like let them be and don't flip them for a sec. Let them sit there for uh, 30, 25 seconds. And when they look like this, like this, now you can turn it. It's hot over here, man. Try and get a little color all the way around. Fabulous. Yes, yes, yes. Gorgeous. Doing well, guys. Doing really well. It's just too hot. I mean, the heat is unbelievable. Okay, for me, these guys are ready. So we'll take them out, put them back on this little tray. Let this heat back up and then do part two. Now that the pan's hot, a little bit more oil, and in we go with our steak. Same drill. Color all the way around. Then the butter comes in. So let's look. There you go. There you go. Yes, thank you. Beauteous. You might be looking at this going, wait a minute, why don't you just do one big piece and just cut it after? Well, because what's going to happen when we put the butter in, the butter's going to envelop all these little tiny pieces and make it incredible. You could do it. You'd be doing a disservice to yourself. So don't F with what works. All right, lads and lassies, we're ready for step two. We'll just add back the original batch, give everything a nice, happy mix. And then if things weren't looking delicious enough, here comes the butter. Yes, yes, yes. Garlic. Damn, rosemary, a little thyme, that little splat. Look at how the butter glistens these guys up. Oh boy, I don't know about you two. Well, meaning Max and Chancey. Who's ready? I am. Then let's get it on the mashed potatoes. All right, so here's how this goes down. We have our bowl. We have our incredibly perfect mashed potatoes. Hey guys. Let's just make a beautiful landing spot in here for the steak. One more of these. Pretty AF. And now, here's our steak. Still glistening from the butter it's been tossed with. Wow. <laughs> Come on, everybody, play nice here, please. A couple more. What do you say we call it a day? So the only thing I might add is just a tiny bit of black pepper right there. A little on the tatties. That's it. Wow. That's pretty as a picture, and it's gorgeous. Now look, the, uh, the inclination to take one of the guys off the top, well, that would be fine. Except look here, underneath, the juices from the butter 
have started to infiltrate the mash underneath. And that is the bite that you want. So if you get to this before other people, you just go underneath like that. See that? That buttery goodness, that's what you want. Then you get one of your little kids on top. Now that's a bite you can get behind. I already know what the mashed potatoes taste like. And I could eat them by themselves. Stop it. Stop it. Just, just stop it now. Why did I get rid of the spoon? I'll use this. Oh my God. You must do this. I used filet. Find the butcher. Ask them when they're going on sale. Buy a couple extra. Throw them in the freezer. They'll be fine when they defrost. Trust me. They will not be bad unless you freeze them terribly and then get all the air out we could do that it could be another session anyway while the gardeners wind up behind me i'm gonna have one more bite say thanks for watching don't eat the same thing all the time damn you want this